Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be covering another long overdue review of the McFarlane Toys Batman Beyond action figure. Now, for the sake of clarity, this figure is in the 5 inch scale, uh, not to be confused with their DC Multiverse line which is in the 7 inch scale, and we've had Batman Beyond figures, uh, in fact our entire wave dedicated to um, the character there. So this is a very different scale, it's also a very different art style because of course it is mirroring what we saw in the animated series, and this is essentially a repurposing figure from another company when DC Direct actually did their animated series figures uh, many many years ago and I did cover a great deal of these on my channel um, but anyone who saw my, my series covering those figures will know that I had a few gaps in my collection and this was one of them because this figure was actually originally released alongside the old man Bruce Wayne figure uh, in a special two pack and I actually missed that sadly. Now McFarlane Toys are re-releasing those figures uh, with brand new packaging and they're releasing them individually as well. So today let's take a look at the packaging of this figure which is substantially small smaller than what you'd expect from the DC Multiverse line, although this packaging still feels slightly oversized for this scale of figure. The figure does look a little bit small, <laughs> a little bit lost in this space, I think, uh, but it still looks pretty attractive, actually. I think they've done a good job. Now, I actually prefer their animated series figures in terms of the design of the packaging. It tends to be a lot more colourful, tends to be a lot more reflective of what we see uh, on screen, and I just think they, they do a, a lot better job uh, with the presentation of these figures. So, this is a gold label figure, so we can see that logo there in the top left hand corner we can see the figure in all of his glory and some of his bits and pieces there we see that red background that helps the figure sort of really pop there the, the contrast between the red and the black is uh, really quite striking and then we have the Batman Beyond logo at the bottom of the packaging so I think this looks good actually on display as it is but if we flip it and look at the side panel we actually have the Batman Beyond logo um, now this isn't quite as exciting as some of the other Batman animated series uh, side panels that we've seen where we actually have a uh, really nice striking images of the character themselves um, I would have preferred that they kept that consistent and had an image here of Batman but hey uh, I'll take it this still looks colorful still got a nice design there seeing some elements of the future I think uh, which look quite cool and uh, yeah I think this still looks pretty good on the shelf now, if we flip it and look at the reverse of the packaging, we have this fantastic image here uh, of a Batman. Now, this is what I would have liked to have seen on the side panel, but I think this is great. Obviously, it's basically text-free, uh, and it just looks like a really strong, striking image that is you know, writ large, uh, which is fantastic. So you can put, definitely put this on display, and it's going to look really, really cool. Okay, so first impressions upon liberating this figure from the packaging, uh, I have to say the figure does feel quite small and delicate in my hands, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. If we start off by taking a look at this head sculpt, I think they've done a really good job. I, I think, you know, to be fair, DC directed excellent jobs of their sculpting to really maximise um, the authenticity of what we see on screen. Like, the likenesses um, and the, the overall shape and art design of their characters are pretty much spot on. I, I really love this line, uh, and I'm really glad to see it revisited here. Uh, so I really have no criticisms at all in terms of the sculpting. It's also quite nice that we can see that the, the bat symbol has actually been sculpted into the chest. Of course, this is completely uh, unique in terms of the pieces. We've never seen these recycled anywhere else. And I think they've done a really nice job of bringing this to life. Now, where is there a slight criticism? Well, I, obviously, there's no paint apps on this figure whatsoever. So essentially, it's molded in that base plastic. And that's it. With the exception of the red and the silver on the belt and the, uh, the bat symbol, um, there's no other colorization here at all which is you know a little bit limiting i think it's fairly true to what we see on screen but what we've seen with some of the other uh, re-releases from mcfarlane toys is adding some cell shading uh, and that would have been appreciated here some uh, some blue markings to really highlight uh, the, the the lighting i suppose of the environment would have been really cool um it's a shame that we haven't got that because that would help differentiate this from people who bought the original release and who are perhaps thinking about double dipping um as i said for me personally I, I don't mind i'm just glad to have this in my collection but it is kind of noticeable in this day and age that we're not getting anything else else in terms of the extra uh, washes or colorization it does feel a little bit flat in that sense and if we quickly look at the reverse you can see obviously this is just really flat there's nothing going on here uh, whatsoever uh, although i did want to point out that you will see he does have a big peg hole in his back which is a little bit ungainly <laughs> of course this serves a very functional purpose as we'll see with his cape a little bit later Looking at his gauntlet, you can see the fins there that, that jut out the two spikes, which are, you know, quite prominent and look quite good. Again, this could have been emphasized, I think, with a little bit of a wash, but uh, this is nicely sculpted. Um, what you will notice, of course, he does have a closed fist. That's what it comes with in the packaging, and these are quite dainty, um, and that's part of the animation style, but it does make some challenges uh, for the accessories when it comes to hands and feet. And if we take a look at the feet, again, you can see that there's quite a small surface area in terms of this <laughs> art design. This works very well in, in, the, in the animated 
series, um, but it doesn't work so well for action figures. Now, to be fair, he has no problem standing whatsoever, but when you're trying to pose some of these figures, uh, you're going to be a little bit limited, and a balance is often going to be an issue, so you're definitely going to need the stand that it comes with. And speaking of limitations, let's take a look at the articulation. There is a ball joint to the top of the neck, and to be fair, the head can spin all the way around. It can lean left and right, and it can even nod up and down a little bit as well. So, actually, this is pretty good. He does have ball joints in his shoulders, and he can lift his arms all the way up and out there. You can see the joint, which is a bit unfortunate. It doesn't look quite flush to his shoulder either, but hey, he does have a pin swivel at his elbow, so that lower arm will rotate all the way around, and it will hinge to about 90 degrees. Not perfect, but it's fine. Again, he's got another pin swivel at the wrist. That hand will rotate all the way around, and it will hinge forwards and backwards, but it is quite delicate, so be careful with this. He's got a straight swivel at the waist, and that's it. There's no ab crunch. He's got a hinge at the hips, which will kick out the side, which doesn't always look great. The legs will kick forwards and go back a really, really good distance, to be fair. And there is a straightforward hinge at the knee there, allowing that lower leg to kick to about 45 degrees before a final hinge at the ankle. So, what goodies does he come with? We all know that McFarlane toys aren't the best when it comes to accessories, um, but DC Direct wear. And, and so we get, actually, an extra additional three pairs of hands. Uh, various gripping hands, various open palm hands, so, you know, quite a wide range here, which is pretty cool. Then we also get an additional two batarangs as well, and of course these are uniquely shaped, and I really like the way these look, um, so that's really cool and appreciated. And then we get his cape as well, which is uh, very lightweight and very plastic looking, um, but actually quite effective. Now, in terms of all those additional hands we get, it feels almost redundant, really, because there's not an awful lot for him to grip or play with. Um, it, all he has, of course, are these uh, batarangs, which, as I said, they look great. Um, I wouldn't say that they are form-fitted to any particular gripping that hand that he has. Uh, mine tend to rely on gravity and just sliding in between his thumb and forefinger. And this works well enough, but it's not a tight grip. Uh, and I don't feel that any of the hands really have a firm grasp <laughs> on these uh, these accessories. Um, so, you know, not, not the best. Um, but this still looks really good in terms of presentation, and provided you're not moving the figure around, they'll stay in his grip uh, and look you know, pretty good. As soon as you try to pose them, though, they're going to fall out and they're going to be a little bit uh, frustrating to deal with. Looking at the cape then, there is a peg, a rather large peg that screws into that peg hole on the back of his back. <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, and uh, I have to say, it's actually really quite cool because it actually is articulated, meaning you can do a lot of different things with this cape, creating a number of different looks. So there's two ball joints there that will allow uh, the cape to hinge up and down, which is really cool. But they'll also move from side to side as well, so point forwards or backwards. And that actually gives you a, a lot of different options, which is kind of surprising and unexpected. And the end result is pretty fun, I've got to say. I really do like this when you have his arms outstretched and you have uh, the cape there. This looks really quite striking. I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And before I wrap up for today, I'd want to do a very quick scale comparison so you could see uh, how uh, this scale Batman uh, compares to the DC Multiverse Batman that we get. So here he is standing next to the Val Kilmer Batman from Batman Forever. Uh, so you can see, obviously, a huge difference <laughs> uh, between these two, uh, both in height and uh, girth and every, every measure you can think of, really. I mean, it's, it's really apparent. And that's why this figure, for me, feels a, a, a little bit delicate by comparison. Uh, and I think my overall takeaway is that this is a really nice figure. Uh, I'm really glad to finally own this in my collection. I uh, haven't had that gap for a very long time. I really like the character. I like the, the look and the design. And I'm glad that it's consistent with the other animated series figures that we've had from both McFarlane Toys and DC Direct uh, in the past, uh, which is brilliant. However, it does feel like a action figure from another time because, of course, these figures were released ooh, at least 10 years ago, if not maybe 15 years ago, um, and things have moved on and things are very different. So the articulation scheme is obviously very limited. Um, he does feel very lightweight, um, it, like literally he's quite light uh, and a little bit a little bit brittle. Um, so I've had no problems with him, don't get me wrong, nothing has snapped, um, but I do feel um, slightly nervous <laughs> posing him. Um, and yeah, and of course, we're we're not really seeing much in the way of paint apps at all, which is a, is a real shame, uh, and that could have been improved upon this time around. Um, so, all in all, I really like this figure. For me, it is three stars. Um, I think it's it's a nice figure. It's presented well, um, but it does feel a little bit dated. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving the video a like. That kind of thing really does help the channel out, and it allows me to keep making more content. And if you're interested in seeing more content, remember to hit subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos coming soon.